Okay, guys, in this video, I will discuss about the plastic section modulus. Okay, or in short, ZP. You know that to design any steel beam, you have to find the design capacity of the steel beam, and for that, you need to use the plastic section modulus concept for your compact or semi compact. Okay, so what is this ZP? Not only that, for different uh, section, steel section, in any steel table, you will also find this plastic section modular or ZP directly for your ready reference. But I think you should know the basic of this plastic section modular or how to calculate this plastic section modular manually. Okay, so if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited. Okay. So let's start from the very basic. Okay, so what is this? This is simply the space strain diagram of a steel member or steel object. Okay, so here uh, for simplicity, I have considered an I section. Okay, and a simply supported beam. Okay, let's say you are applying some moment in this beam. Okay, so due to this moment, what will happen? Simply at the bottom of this I section, there will be some tension, and at the top of this I section, there will be some compression. And not only that, if this is the neutral axis, in that case, the compression zone is from this neutral axis to this topmost fiber. Okay, and similarly, the tension zone is from this neutral axis to this bottom most fiber. Okay. So now if the moment is very less in that case the maximum space is less than the each space. Okay. So here you can say that the space is somewhere here. Okay. Now if you increase the moment. Okay. Let's say we are increasing this moment. Now the space will also increase and at a certain point the space reach to the in space. Okay? Or we can say that the farthest fiber of the section is space as is in space or equal. Okay? Now, as the section is compact section, we are considering that we are using the compact section. Okay? If the moment is increased further, what will happen? The space will remain the in space, but the nearest fiber to the neutral axis. Okay, so initially the farthest fiber from the neutral axis was space at its in space. Now, not only that fiber, other fiber towards this neutral axis, okay, will also be space at in space. There you can see that this fiber, this fiber, all this fiber up to this zone has been spaced at its in value. Okay. Now, let's increase the moment again. What will happen? Now, this zone which was earlier not spaced under in condition, now this is also spaced at its in value. Now, here you can see that all the fiber of the section, all the fiber, okay, nothing is left. All the fiber of the I section has been traced up to its in value. Okay, and in this condition, in this condition, when all the fiber has reached to its in value, in this value, we call the moment as plastic moment. Okay. So, in this plastic moment capacity, the section simply stays in its condition for all the fiber. No fiber is left. That is why, here you can see that instead of linear stress stress diagram, instead of linear stress stress diagram, the stress stress diagram is rectangular. Okay. So, what is the implication of this? Well, 
So now we have understood that for a compact section, if we apply the plastic moment to the section, all the fiber, whether it is in compressing zone or it is in tension zone, all the fiber has reached to its end state value. Okay, so in this condition, if this is a uh, section, consider this is an arbitrary section and after application of the plastic moment, all the fiber has increased that in the compression zone, all this fiber has reached to its state, also in tension zone, then it's valid. Okay, and if this is the neutral axis at plastic state, you can say that it is under equilibrium. That means that net compressive force is equal with net tensile force. Right? So, if the area for the compressive zone is let's say A1 and for tensile zone let's say this is A2, what is the net compressive force is AFC? That is simply A1, this whole area times the stress and the stress is constant throughout this bit okay so the total compressive stress sorry total compressive force is coming as a1 times sigma y for the in stress of the material right and similarly the total tensile force or fc is coming as this tensile zone that is a2 okay times the in stress again and from equilibrium this is equal Fc equal to Fc or uh, we can say A1 sigma y is equal to A2 sigma y cancel sigma y both sides and we are getting A1 equal to A2 so what is the implication of this this implies that in plastic state okay this neutral axis simply divide the whole section in two equal half okay so a1 equals to a2 mean in plastic state this neutral axis divide the whole section into two equal half okay so a1 is with a2 equals with the a by 2 where a is the the cross sectional area okay so now go further okay so now it is clear to you so now it is clear to you when your section reach to plastic condition and what happens with the fiber in plastic condition okay then you have also learned that at plastic condition the plastic neutral axis simply divides the section into two equal parts okay now come to section modular plastic section modulus z okay so simply what is the section modulus the section modulus is nothing but the area of the particular concerned area okay which we are considering and the distance of its centroid from the neutral axis okay so this is the distance from the neutral axis to the center. Okay. So in case of a ZP, so what is the area of the compressive zone? Let's say this is A1. Okay. What is the distance of centroid from plastic neutral axis? Okay. It is let's say YC. Plus, what is this area? Tensile area. This is A2 and what is the distance of centroid of this tensile zone from plastic neutral axis? Let's say this is Yc. Okay. Now you know that A1 is equal to A2 that is A by 2. So we can rewrite this as A by 2 times Yc plus Yc. Okay. And that is your Z P. Got it? So now simply apply this concept for a simply a rectangular section. Okay, you can also check for a circular section, but you should do it for yourself as your uh, homework. Okay, 
Now I will apply this surface into rectangular section. For a rectangular section, what is the section modulus? Plastic section modulus. This is the H square by H. This is a uh, normal. So I should mention this as a uh, plastic. Okay. So what is plastic section modulus? That is ready. Simply this is moment of inertia about neutral axis divided by the distance of the farthest fiber of the section from neutral axis. That is H by 2. So for rectangular section, I will simply be H by 12 divided by H by 2. And you are getting at H square by uh, uh, 6. Okay, so this is the plastic section modulus. Now we will calculate the plastic section modulus or that P. So what is that P? Simply A by 2 times Yc plus Yc. Yc plus Yc. Okay. So, if this is a rectangular section, so the plastic neutral axis is such that it simply divides the whole section into equal parts. So, it is located at a distance of h by 2. Okay. So, we are considering the total depth is h. Okay. And the depth is left to b. So, a is coming as b h by 2. What is y here? Y at the middle, so that is h by 4. Same, what is y t? That is also h by 2. So, this is h by 4. Sorry, h by 4. So, you are getting red t as b h by 2 times h by 2. That is b h square by 4. So, you can see clearly that. For elastic section modulus, it is h square by 6, but here it is h square by 4. So definitely, rate t is far greater than rate t. Why? The reason is very simple. In case of a uh, elastic condition, only the farthest fiber gets stressed up to it in stress. But in case of a plastic modulus, all the fiber carries equal stress. That is equal to Fy. That is why the uh, uh, rate speed has been always greater than rate. Okay, so that's it. It's a lovely video. So, thank you.